Patty folks, my name's Shane. Today I'm going to show you how I go about setting up guitars that I've either just purchased or traded or whatever. This particular guitar just came in today. It's a Blake Wright guitar and it's traveled all the way from the US to Australia where I'm located and I've noticed a couple of little things. I noticed the action is extremely high. It's still playable but it's too high for me. I've also noticed the neck has a little bit too much of a curve in it as well, a little bit too much relief. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that and how I would go about fixing that also. A huge thanks to Blake Wright Guitars for sending this out by the way too. It looks absolutely cool. This is actually a budget guitar. I would kind of put this in the same quality ballpark as the Squire Classic Vibe Series guitars. In terms of the finish, the way it feels, all that kind of stuff, it feels great. It just needs a little bit of work. I'm not a guitar tech, but over the years I've tinkered and messed with stuff and I have a feeling I should be able to get this sorted out pretty quickly. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just loosen the strings a little bit. Just give it a little bit of slack. Don't have to take them off. I'm gonna leave these strings on here. It's probably it's probably a good idea to put new strings on, but I know that Blake has actually put strings on before he sent them out, so they should still be okay, even though the guitar's traveled a long way. So that's a whole lot looser now, which is good. It's probably about enough for what I need to do next. Now looking down the actual strings, the bass side of the strings is way too high. I've loosened the strings enough that I can simply use my fingers now and lower it like this keeping an eye on the strings. Now with full tension on the strings, this is gonna be really, really tough. So I always recommend just loosening the strings a little bit. You just do a few turns and see how it looks. That should be about okay. So it's right about now, I like to just tune it back up, see how it plays. I have a feeling I'm gonna still need to adjust the truss rod slightly. So it's right about now that I just use the clip-on tuner and we tune up. I have a feeling I'm still gonna need to adjust the truss rod. That's all right, we'll see how we go. Always the fear of the string breaking. Why is that? That's E flat. <laughs> there we go, cool. And you notice one thing I didn't do, I didn't get a ruler out, I didn't go measuring any of this. If that wasn't right, what I would do, I'd grab my Les Paul, which is the kind of the most similar guitar to this, I guess, that I've got. And I would kind of use that as a guide for how this guitar should feel when I play it. It already feels great. As you take a look down the neck, you can probably see it looks pretty much spot on. It's a hard camera angle to shoot. There's still a bit of relief in the neck, which is good. It might be a little too much, but it's, it plays good, it plays good, and that's kind of what I go by. Yeah, it might still be, it. there might be a little too much relief, so let's go ahead and adjust the truss rod. This is one of those things you can do yourself, you don't need to take it to someone if you follow these simple steps. Now, I'm lazy, I'm not gonna take the strings off. I like to have the tension on the actual truss rod when I go to adjust it. So I can pretty much instantly see if I've done the right thing or not, or if it feels like it's playing well. That's the main thing. Now, all of this stuff still has the plastic on it. If you're wondering why the finish might look funny on the this little bit here, it's actually still got the plastic on it. Now, that thread on this screw isn't great. There we go. So it gets around that string, boom. It's hope, hopefully it's got a truss rod, it's a cheap guitar. <laughs> and it absolutely does. Now I've got a bag full of these that from guitars all over the years, so let's find the right one. This is always fun. Let's see if we can pick it first go. Ooh, I reckon this could be close. This could be close. Too big. All right, it's this one. No? All right, so I need a smaller one than that. <laughs> and that's not smaller. All right. Let's try this guy. Too 
too big still. All right. Got a million of these things, so one of these should work. All right, so we're good. Now that I found the right tool for the job, put it in. And I want to try to get it to the left a little bit. All right, here we go. So to tighten the truss rod, which will make it bend backwards, we go righty, righty tighty. And that's all we do. We do a quarter of a turn and we stop. And we take a look. Sometimes you gotta wait a little while before you should turn it again, but I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it one more. One more quarter turn, Oop. Now, some people like to wait until tomorrow or they like to leave the guitar a few hours. I don't think that's too necessary right now. I can tell pretty quickly if it's good to go. And I still want a little bit of relief in the neck, but I don't want it quite as prominent as before. It'll make playing a lot easier without a huge sort of curve in the neck. Man, that looks really good. So now I like to test just to see how it plays. And the strings are back to tuned. I think they're 10s from memory. I play 11s normally, but this actually feels pretty good. All right, that's it, I'm done. I think that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna trust my gut with this and put the truss rod cover back on and I'm gonna shoot a demo of this coming up really, really soon. So that's all I like to do. And I also occasionally just like to check what's going on in here. So let's take a quick look. Now, because this guitar is a P90 guitar, which are single coils for those who don't know, P90s can buzz a lot. They can buzz more than strats or just as much, depending on the guitar, depending on the pickup, depending on the shielding, depending on the room you're playing in and probably a million other reasons as well. But what I'm gonna do is just take a look because in my cupboard, I actually have some shielding that I might apply if it needs it. It just might help. So let's go take a look, see what's in here. So this is one of the trade-offs of a cheap guitar. There's no shielding in there. There's some paint and I have a feeling that's just paint. It doesn't look actually like there's sh any shielding in there. So the pots don't look too bad for small, cheap pots. For a guitar that's sub 200 bucks, this is built extremely well. So don't take this the wrong way. I think I might apply some shielding in here. It may help, it might not help, but I think it might be worth doing. So I also have some pots. If this guitar becomes something that I keep, and that I use a lot, I'm gonna replace these pots already, I can just tell. But if it works fine, and I shield it, and everything's fine, I'll leave it as it is. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. I've had so many requests for this video, so if it was helpful, give it a thumbs up. I absolutely appreciate that. If you do have any comments or questions, leave me in the comments section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, I'll be doing a demo of this really great cheap guitar coming up very, very soon. So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Like I said, I'm no tech. If you want to see good tech work, good, go over to Woodzo Guitar Mods or Will's Easy Guitar. They have lots of great tips on how to do this stuff properly. This is just what I've learned through tinkering and it seems to work fine. If I was to put heavier strings on this guitar, I may need to adjust the neck again, but the height is great now. It feels so much better to play and it was as simple as loosening the strings and bringing down the height of the bridge just with my fingers, it's that simple. So nice and easy. If I got a lot of fret buzz and choking out, I would move it back up slightly. Buzzing and choking out can sometimes also be not only the action height, but also the neck. And if it's got too much relief or it has a back bow, that can also be a problem. This doesn't have that problem. It was a nice, easy setup. And this is a Blake Wright guitar and I'm looking forward to doing a demo of it. Like I mentioned, folks, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more help tutorial videos, I'll pop them up in the cards and you can check them out also. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.